Hey folks, Jonathan here. Okay, been looking for one of these. I hadn't been actively looking, but keeping my eye out for one for 25 years at least. And uh, it's a log splitter. And we found this one in the woods and bought it. And it's in pretty rough shape. Made in Greensboro, North Carolina by Greensboro Boiler. Let me see. I can't quite read it right now, but it's Boiler Works or Boiler Company. Uh, boiler manufacturing company I think so this was at a old house and it had a bird uh, house hanging from it and uh, the bird house had already rotted and fell down and it looks like somebody was using a motor and they was probably using this belt and then are running it this belt running this belt this is an add-on so we're gonna take it back off <clears throat> you can run a belt directly from the top these things would run this thing's recommended at one horsepower and it'll split wood on both sides some people call them a power axe uh, different names for them but it's actually a splitter so everything's froze up so Martin's gonna start cleaning on it and see what we can get done all right, all right folks we cleaned this off a little bit <laughs> I can read it so Greensboro boiler and machine company and that's Greensboro North Carolina so we're going to finish get this cleaned up get it oiled up and see if we can get it freed up we may run this to a, the next show in sanford uh, they don't have one up there and it'd be neat to, to uh, let people see it but, all right we're going to get the cleaning on it step back a little bit so you can see the whole thing so if anybody don't know it just turns with the pulley and these go up and down and that's it there's not much to it it just uh, simple machine does some pretty good splitting though. all right this has been something I have watched for and looked for for 25 years uh, really a, a rare piece uh, you'll see them but you rarely ever find one for sale it's made in Greensboro at Greensboro Buller and uh, Machine Company and uh, I think it was made by Glasscock or something in uh, Greensboro but they lettered it as this because this is the company that sold it <clears throat> and I'm guessing that but I'm pretty sure they were known for making a lot of them so I think that was Glasscock is the company that made it but anyway this is a wood splitter and this is not just a single wood splitter this is the double this is the one for two people to operate this is powered by a flat belt so uh, when I ran one of these which was at the old mill crank up 25 years ago or more I done it for show of course but I also done it for a week before the show we had every fifth grade student in Lee County come through so I used to have to explain to them you know what it done and how it worked and all that stuff and then I'd fire it up and then I'd, I'd split with it and when you split you're holding the, the wood in your hand and it's kind of funny because the kids would uh, really you could see their eyes light up when it come down and slammed that first time and usually the first question I got was is have I ever had my hand stuck in it but uh you know that of course as you can see i got all my fingers so no i haven't but uh, they have got one there and it was made in greensboro also it was not the same uh company i think it, it actually is a glasscock but this one here is just a you know labeled as a greensboro uh boiler company but this like i said they're they're pretty much unobtainium i mean you can see them and you can find them but you don't find them for sale this is the first one in 25 years i've been that I've seen that I was able to buy and I made an offer on it and I I made what I thought was a really good offer on it and the guy jumped you know right on it and uh, I bought quite a few other pieces from him I'm going to show you they've been sitting for a lot of years and uh, we've got it freed up uh, ready to work and this requires one horsepower now we ran the one at the old mill on one and a half horsepower and two of us could split with no problem now these tables are fully adjustable you can uh, turn them you know to raise them up and down now all this was stuff we had to get it all freed up but uh you run them up and down for different size wood uh, this thing is in absolute mint condition when it comes to the i mean it's like they haven't even used it uh, almost like it come off the showroom floor but uh one repair i seen right here and it's missing a bolt and it's missing a bolt on the other side also we're going to get them in 
and get everything adjusted because we loosened it up a little bit to uh, get it free and to where it would work really good and uh, everything works good slides good turns good nowhere you know no bearings worn out anything like that so this will get belted up and get used here and uh and it may go to shows every once in a while or you know something local or something like that but uh i was really really glad to find this so i bought this and i got a couple of other pieces also and i'll show you okay i'm going to dem demonstrate it without uh without any power on it Alright, so it's about that time of year again where we can uh, get the boiler filled up and and uh, we'll actually do some testing before we run it, but uh, as you can see I got rags in there to wick it out. It's nice and dry. Uh, we'll go clean everything out of it and make sure she's good to go for another year. But one thing I'm doing, you see one of my stacks is down because I just had him sitting up there because I never finished up what I wanted to have. And I think these are 11 inches, 10 or 11 inches, uh, these particular stacks. And there was two of them, one side by side. And, you know, uh, Tony Sears had them way up there. And he said that without them up there, when you open the doors, you got a lot of fire in your face. Didn't draw a good draft. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of changing on this thing. And I know exactly what he's talking about, about the draft, because it's done it to us, especially when the wind's blowing. And it's with these little short pipes, it's even worse. Uh, a few things we're going to do. We are going to go through and do a little work on the firebox, not the firebox, the smoke box, which is this. On this end, you can see it hanging down a little bit. And the lower section's ru rusted. There's an upper section in there, too. I'll have to open it up and show you, but it's not that big of an issue just to repair it. Uh, and you don't have to get involved with the boiler itself. This is all separate. This piece just bolts on. And uh, as you can see, it's a separate, completely separate piece. So it just rotted the bottom out, so we need to make a new piece and probably just put it in and be done with it. Uh, and like I said, as long as we're not welding on the boiler, we're good. So what are we going to do? Okay, this tree is next to here. This is a what we call a scrub oak around here, but if it gets so big and that's it, they're not going to grow anymore. So I think it's going to disappear maybe put into the boiler and what we're going to do is in that right there about where it's at i'm going to put a stack now this is going to be a you know a smoke stack a big one tall one uh, 20 inch diameter uh, what i'm going to do is at the bottom of the stack is going to be a wood stove basically a two by two i'm going to show it to you because i've already started on it. so basically a two by two box with the 20 inch pipe on top of it so what we'll do is before we build a fire in this boiler we will build a fire in the bottom of the chimney and when we build a fire in it that's going to get a, a draft going it's going to draw so this pipe so that pipe will be up basically where this tree's at just figure a 20 inch pipe up where this tree is we'll have a probably a square pipe coming off of here and running over and running right into the side of it now my question was when i was uh trying to research this is do i need to run this pipe up at an angle or straight across and they say it's fine to run it straight across i may do a little bit of an angle but uh anyway what it's going to do is i can't put a 20 inch eighth inch thick stack on top of here and expect it to hold and then plus we still want to put a roof over top of this boiler so and that's going to be pretty rough to do but i'm going to do it but uh so that's why we want to get the, the stack out away from it and i bought some stuff to do the stack and what i bought was a 20 inch eighth inch wall 42 inches long and what these were i'll show you what they look like okay so these are just uh pipes that were used in the center of the steel coils when they bought steel to do metal roofing and they're really close to all being exactly 20 inch and uh eighth inch and you figure 60 something inches long 42 inches wide is what it piece of steel it is and you can get them for 25 dollars a piece which is they were of course new when i bought them 
and uh, they even look new but they got a little rust on them now but they're eighth inch thick so they'll last a good long time so here's what we're doing this is my firebox and my stack as you can see I've got two sections only so we're working on it and getting ready to cut out for the door we're just running a an old door off an old wood heater and then the bottom I'm going to put I was going to put a little door in the bottom but I think what I'm going to do is make a door that raises up and on a hinge and that way we can get in there really good with like a shovel and get it cleaned out because the plans are to put heavy angle down and over on each side for a foundation and actually bolt this down to the foundation so we're going to build it uh, strong so it don't uh, go anywhere Anyway, that's the plan. All right, here we got the door cut out. It's the door I'm using. And like I said, I was going to do the bottom, but I'm going to do, we use these uh, hinges, I think, and build something that hinges up. And I'm going to do a two-piece grate. One on that side, one on that side. I can get it in the door and lay them down. And uh, I know what size they need to be already anyway. And I'll just have to weld some holders in there to keep it from going all the way down. And uh, that's going to work out fine. Like I said, I'm going to, the ash pit's just going to be on top of the concrete. I'm not going to put a uh, piece of steel down there on the bottom because, I mean, it'll end up rotting out anyway. Concrete will do probably just about as good. And then I want this to where it's uh, level and I can go in there with a shovel and clean it out good. And uh, that should work. We'll keep at this. I'm going to have to make me a couple pieces to put on for the hinges. And uh, that's just off an old wood heater of some sort that I picked up. Uh, don't ever throw any of that cast iron stuff away. I keep it. So uh, that's about a perfect size door for what I want on this particular job. So uh, I think I'm going to lay this all down and weld it all together. I can't go. Uh, I can't go but so high. You know, this is uh, so that's 84 inches, and that's two foot, so 24. So. There you go, 108 inches. So some of you may have seen this or remember it. Uh, this is a basically a big, big hook and it's got handles on it. And you can see how big it is, my foot. Uh, this was made by the Hercules company. And this is actually a stump puller. So what you do is there's a winch that came with this that the horses walked around and you had it chained off or cabled off to another stump. Or a big tree and you guided this by hand into the stump and once it got into the stump you just backed away from it and let the horses take over and pull until something happened and you know hoping that you're going to pull the stump out and you can see it's forked right there now these are hard to find the winch seems to be a lot easier to find than than this particular piece here uh, this was in front of a guy's house and I kept trying to get him to sell it, trying to get him to sell it, and he didn't want to sell it. And I finally just made him an offer on it. And evidently he didn't think I want to pay much because when I made the offer, he said, yeah, let's load it in your truck. So, I mean, jumped right on it. So, anyway, I was glad to be able to get it. Hercules Manufacturing Company. So I was on the lookout. Now, I've had this for a couple years, a few years, to look out for another winch or for a winch that matched this piece. And I have actually got one. Okay, as found in the woods. Hercules Manufacturing Company, same exact company. So this end got tied off to the tree. Uh, this end you ran the cable through and then this top section uh, had a board that went here and a long bar which runs over a good ways was the bracket for it. So that gives you an idea of how long the board was. I'm gonna guess, uh, well, we won't guess, we'll walk it off. It's right at 10 foot. So that horse was walking in a 10 foot circle around this winch. And when the horse got to the cables, it stepped over the cables because horses aren't as dumb as people think they are, or even mules or donkeys. Uh, I actually seen horses do this, but not with a winch. They done it with a, a power unit with a drive shaft. And every time he'd come to the drive shaft, they'd walk right across the top of it. They never, never tripped them up or anything. So. Uh, they would have had to walk over the cable on both sides, but that would have been a, a pretty bad job for a uh, 
for a horse. I kind of feel sorry for it, but I was so glad to find the match. And believe it or not, the guy that I had bought the log splitter from and a couple other pieces that I'm going to show you and a couple pieces I haven't picked up yet, I'm going to tell you about. Uh, when I showed him pictures of the other Hercules piece I had, he said that this piece needed to be with that piece, and he actually gave me this. So that means even, you know, even more. And so now we've got a, a matching set, both the same brand, and, uh, you know, I don't think they was ever together, but they are now. So we're going to get this cleaned up. And uh, this cable is, uh, let me see, it's probably... If it's not an inch, it's seven eighths. I mean, it's close to an inch. So they was doing some serious pulling. You know, this is not a, it's not a toy. I promise that. But uh, I could imagine. So the ones I've seen has had two skids on them down here, and this would have sat down on the ground on the skids, and then you could drag it around with the horse wherever you needed it, and then hook it up. And that's probably about right with them bolts. So it would have had skids probably uh, two inches thick, two and a half inches thick, maybe. And, uh, or maybe they may have been recessed up in, so they may have been like four inches thick and then recessed. So. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to look at some old pictures and get that stuff made and get this cleaned up also. So the log splitter also, that is boiled linseed oil. Totally coated with boiled linseed oil. No paint on it whatsoever. Uh, just completely cleaned it up, got it free, and then coated it to preserve it. All right. All right, next pieces I picked up. Uh, this was made by the Murray Company. Now, I thought this was the same company that made Murray steam engines, the Murray cordless engines. It is not. This, this is actually the same company that made my Continental Gen Company uh, steam engine, which was in Atlanta and Texas, Dallas, Texas. And they made a lot of stuff for cotton gins. These are, there's two of them. One's uh, a union made in Battle Creek, Michigan, but uh, these are steam pumps. And these are massive steam pumps. I don't know it would it would feed a big boiler and these flywheels here are four foot to give you an idea of the size of them so they would have ran off of probably just a regular steam engine um, and then the steam engine would you know make the pump work and pump the water into the boiler so they're probably you know over 150 psi pumps i have no doubt uh you know a short stroke or pretty short stroke on them but these are massive really for being steam pumps way more steam or way more water I'm sorry than I would ever really need but these things were not gonna uh, they wasn't gonna get saved I mean I'm sure you know nobody wants this stuff but me I guess very few people this was pretty neat so I guess this is how you kicked it out the belt here would power it the belt here would freewheel so it would have had a slide to slide it back and forth and then uh, this is the Union Patent 1914, May 19th, Union Steam Company, the Steam com a Pump Company, and the, as you can see, the boards on it. And I actually have another union that's a small union, not as big as that. That's a good size one there, and then that's a really massive, I don't know what the bore is on the pistons, but it's a three cylinder. And uh, I am sure this thing would pump out some, some water now, a lot of water. So, anyway, well, there's that. Here's our other union. This is a union pump also. And uh, this is just a small, well, not real small. You can see it's what, four foot long near. And uh, just a neat piece. It was very Richmond, Virginia is where it was bought. And another thing that, you know, it's missing some parts, but I can't, can't leave it behind. Got a new uh, laser, 12 inch wide laser. I've got a nine and now this 12, so this is a clipper. And this is for belt lacing, for putting belts together. And I bought this uh, up in the museum. Someone, you know, you may have seen it on the trailer, but uh, got it soaking in uh, a mixture of transmission fluid and uh, acetone. So, all right, what I want to tell you about. When I, I actually bought this, these steam pumps and these, this uh, wood splitter, I wasn't actually going for them parts. I was going to look at some engines and I did buy three engines. And these aren't steam engines, these are diesel engines. Uh, Fairbanks Moors, uh, nine foot tall, single cylinder, 12,000 pounds. Uh, 
Two of them are singles, one of them's a two-cylinder, and it's closer to 18,000 pounds. And we're going to haul these things, so it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to haul the, the first two on my new rollback, and you'll be able to see what it'll do. We're going to have to load them, and I'm going to try to put some pictures. They're sitting on top of, uh, well, one of the big two-cylinders on railroad ties, and the two single-cylinders are on fence posts. And they're about uh, two foot off the ground at least. And so they were unloaded off the trailer with a come-along pulling from a tree and just slid right over, you know, onto these uh, uh, railroad ties and onto the, the fence posts, as you'll see, you can see in the pictures. Uh, these are big engines, and we're going to definitely try to get at least two of them fired. I think one of them may be parts engine. Two of them are in really nice shape. These ran a cotton gin uh, down toward uh, South Carolina. The only reason I haven't picked them up yet and done a video on it is we're, we're fighting the weather. Uh, where, are they, where they're at, I can't get in and out of there if it's wet and raining and you know april showers bring may flowers and we've had some rain already so i'm hoping we're not gonna you know have to put it off for very long and we're gonna we're gonna keep trying to get up there and get them and then i'll absolutely do videos on getting them loading them loading them on the new truck and uh the new old truck i know it's not a new truck but uh i'm gonna call it a new truck so don't jump on me about that but uh anyway that's about all that's going on right now. We're going to get this stack finished up so we can uh, fire our boiler up here real soon. And uh, I don't want to fire it again until I get that done. Uh, that's just something I've been wanting to do. So anyway, a um, lot of gabbing here and, and uh, we'll get back to getting some work done. Appreciate you watching. Till next time. Bye.